This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by NIL Game Changers, Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, and Brewers Outlet. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And this half hour is brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Auto, home, life, business, boat, motorcycle, RV. You have multiple insurance needs. And you need great professionals to handle all of them while also doing everything they can to save you money. That is Purdy Insurance. The pros, pros. Market Street and Sunbury, go to purdyinsurance.com. And don't forget the Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament, Wednesday, August 7th, at the Susquehanna Valley Country Club to benefit the Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA. We'll be out there for that. Get your team together and join us for a great event for a great cause. All right, always great to talk with John Griffin, the head basketball coach at Bucknell. First of all, John, how are you doing? Steve, I'm great. Happy to be on. Uh, happy to discuss the upcoming topic that you and I are going to talk about, but I'm doing well. We are just finishing the academic semester. Uh, things calm down a little bit. Yeah. Well, the first ever head coach of the Charlotte Hornets was Dick Harder, the former Penn State head coach. Yep. The new head coach is now Bucknell's Charles Lee. What does it mean to everybody there and to you to see him ascend to this spot? Uh, it's, it's special um, for a number of different reasons. I mean, it's historic. It's special. I think that everybody, whether you play with Charles, watch Charles play, uh, or just spent time with him is, is just incredibly proud and excited for him. Um, you know, there's a couple of things about Charles that many people don't know, especially in the circles that he's existing in right now in the NBA. He was an unbelievable player. He was essentially a borderline NBA player. He was the, the last cut of the San Antonio Spurs and had an unbelievable professional basketball career in and then uh, we had to make our decisions, and this one wasn't as hard uh, of a decision in terms of his life, but he retired, and it's taken him a different path. And he worked on Wall Street and got married to a Bucknell alum who was also a basketball player. Um, so many people called his coaching career. He's one of my closest friends in life, and he's had these uh, interview opportunities now for about four or five straight years. And... Uh, Hanging at the door, and eventually you you get uh, put in a position where you hope you're going to get the opportunity. He deserves this opportunity, but leader, he's charismatic. He's... I'm telling you, the people in this community we we revere him. He's a legend, and I'm just so proud of him and happy for him. It's just such a great moment for him, but also selfishly for Bucknell basketball. It's put us on a really I mean, we have Mike Muscala, but this is a global moment for us, and I'm um, really excited to be a part of it. Right. There's only 30 of them. He's one of the 30. Uh, in a world of 8 billion people, he's one of 30 NBA head coaches. Uh, so there are certain guys that you can look at and say, you know what, I could see that guy someday being a coach. Was he one of those guys? You know what? Uh, early in our career uh, together – here at Bucknell, he was actually a guy that I thought would be in the NBA. <laughs> right, yeah. For, you know, a decade. Like, I didn't view him as a, as a coach, so to say. I viewed him as a elite player. And um, he, even the years following his graduation, he, he him and I spent time together in Germany. He's two years older than me, and he was in the first league, and I was in the second league. And his career statistically in Europe were unbelievable. So it never really crossed my mind. Um, and then we kind of jumped into this coaching space at the same time. And uh, I had just finished my video coordinator year with the Pacers. The NBA went into a lockout. Charles was in his finishing 
a year in New York City. And uh, we started hitting like the, it's called Hoop Group, but it's a camp circuit. And it's really started to network together. Uh, we got in the car together and went, stayed in hotels together. And uh, he got hired here as an assistant at Bucknell, and I got hired at Ryder as the director of basketball operations. And um, at that point, you could see, uh, at least on a day to day, how he could really get the most out of somebody. And in, in coaching, that's such a critical uh, and invaluable. Uh, it comes very natural to him. So uh, he's ascended to this unbelievable spot. But along the way, he's progressed at a at a natural rate, and uh, he, this is just the perfect time for him and his family. Is he is he one of those guys? You know, because you've been around him so often, whether player, coach, or whatever, that has what can be termed as that next level mind. In other words, when he was playing. The athleticism is one thing. The mind is another. Is it, was he one of those guys? Um, you could probably point to, you know, a few things um, that we did schematically. Uh, I talked to Coach Flannery last night uh, for a while because his coach is pretty pretty darn strong right now, and it's very unique because these are all people that have done well in the coaching industry, but not as his assistants, although he has that world as, you know, he has head coaches right now that work for him, but right. his team, his players, uh, especially the two teams that down around here, beating Kansas and Arkansas and the success we had, yeah. you have Charles Lee, who's a head coach in the NBA, and Kevin Bentoncourt, who was his side-by-side, you know, contributor, who's a head coach, successful head coach in Division Three. Um, here I am uh, leading the helm at Bucknell, and we've had uh, strength coaches, and it's kind of uh, been an interesting um, dynamic here. And uh, what I can tell you about Charles is he is uh, he's very innovative well, of the all- NBA and his trajectory. He has been a part of some unbelievable teams, like NBA. He's an NBA champion. In the playoffs, I think, ten of the last eleven years. Right. Well, and you know, you've been around it. It it is a different level, and it's as much strategy as it also happens to be personality management uh, in yeah. the NBA. You have to have both to do it: strategy and personality management. You know, and and you know, because you you've been there. I'm not telling you know. I'm just telling the audience, not you, obviously. But you know, so you have to have a certain temperament to do it. What is his temperament? I think that he's very personable and he's very even keeled. Uh, he okay. So Kevin Bentoncourt and myself, you know, you, you spend so much time with your teammates. We're very hot headed. Uh, <laughs> where are emotions on our people? Kevin's from Boston, Peabody, Mass. And Charles found a way to uh, absorb, I would say, the heat that we gave off as competitors and redirect it. And uh, he's got a a very unique ability to understand people quickly and ultimately give the energy and attention that person needs to be the best version of himself. It's unique. And for that spend time with Charles will tell you, uh, that he is uh, a pretty unbelievable person. Makes a big difference. Makes a huge difference. Uh, uh, I oh, mean, no uh, doubt. Uh, this, this is awesome. It's it's so for our for our program. It's such an historic moment. But again, around here, he's a legend. I mean, he led us in scoring yeah. against Kansas. We beat teams we yeah. shouldn't have beat. He was our number one player, and uh, he's a competitor. He's a winner. Uh, but as you just alluded to, you have to be able to connect with people as a head coach in the NBA, especially. And if I was to say, what's his number one attribute? It's that he can really connect with people on a deep level, and, and in this case, help them be the best players and people that they can be. No, I mean, look, yeah, and of course, the Bucknell fans all remember him being 
Patriot League Player of the Year, three-time All-Patriot selection, won back-to-back Patriot League Tournament MVP awards. As you said, Charles Lee could flat-out play. Yeah. Now he's the head coach of the Charlotte Hornets. It wasn't too long ago that we were running around Lewisburg in the orange and the blue. Yeah. You know? so, That's right now. It's right. Know, he's it's he's right. under 40 years old. He's 39 years old, leading uh, an NBA franchise. That is, I think, cusp of being a playoff team. They have some first round draft picks and they have some young talent uh, on the roster right now. Young talent that I think Charles will be able to connect with immediately. Well, see, that's an interesting point you bring up. Being 39, and I know he's been in the NBA for 10 years as as a coach, but being 39, and you're at that point, too, with, with you, you're, you're working with some younger players, but does that still allow you to connect with them because you're not Steve Jones who's in his 60s? <laughs> <laughs> And you're a young 60. You are young. The way that you travel around the country with Penn State, you I think it does. I think you you have um, – I think what, what at, at 39 years old, an advantage for Charles is that he understands today's landscape, college – or not college, but professional landscape. And right. I would say the distractions, the complexities – and um, the priorities of what she is living in right now in the NBA. And at 39, you're in tune with that because, number one, you're still young enough that you're paying attention to trends and things of that nature. But number two, you're slightly ahead of the people that you're coaching from a life standpoint, whether it be children or marriage, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and you'd be able to provide uh, mentorship there that is – Real-time applicable. Uh, last time we talked... Okay, I'm sorry. Last time we talked, he said it was always important just to get everybody get a little bit of time away from each other. Uh, yeah. So, you know, because so, you know, it's a long year. So how important is that time? How did you personally elect to use it that will make this a better summer for everybody? Uh, we are just in the beginning stages of it. So transfer portal window closed May uh, 1, and uh, we finished our recruitment for the class 2024. Uh, and so our students are leaving campus now for about a month, and we've been with them for a year because we were uh, we went to Italy last summer on a European tour. So it's been... Uh, we are, you know, right now, face phone calls, text messages. You still have to be ready to recruit. There's an upcoming uh, recruiting weekend. Of course, that's the lifeline of the program, but uh, giving everyone their space, making sure that after 5 p.m. Uh, you are responsible with your phone calls and your text messages. I mean, that's the most important thing because the phone te- has a tendency to drive your life uh, right now in college <laughs> athletics as, as a basketball. <laughs> so last time that uh, it's funny you say that because last night I was at an event in Philadelphia with James Franklin, and I was out checking something in the in the lobby, and all of a sudden James comes out into the lobby and he goes, "Oh, I found it." <laughs> I said, "What'd you find?" I said, "What'd you find?" He goes, I "Found my phone." <laughs> it's like, the light it's fine. A- it's unbelievable. <laughs> you get incredible anxiety when you lose your phone. Trust me, <laughs> John. It is always a pleasure. Thanks a lot for taking time out to talk about what was really a fun topic today. When someone that you know and appreciate and respect so much achieves this, it's it really is remarkable. Yeah, thank you, Steve. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk about them. Hey, thanks, John. Appreciate you, uh, John Griffin. I was called, and I mean this. I think I think John's an outstanding coach. Hey, now. He's going to tell you, I need a better record. Of course he does, right? But that's because people who are driven um, and want to accomplish something are going to feel that way. But John is an outstanding coach. Uh, Bucknell is so lucky to have him back. Very fortunate to have him back.
We'll take a break. This half hour brought to you by Purdy Insurance. Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Mm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I just don't know. Um, me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodeled waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory trained techs take care of your oil change, tire alignments, brakes, and inspections? Quick Lane, 630 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 630 till 2. Sunbury Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the Mm. Mm. out of auto repair. You want your young athlete to get the most out of life and NIL. You need a roadmap, a strategic approach. NIL Game Changers help student athletes earn while they learn in their collegiate journey. Driven by former student athletes and coaches who work as NIL sports agents and content media designers, they'll guide both student and family, starting with high school students looking toward college and those already in college. Get a seasoned team of marketing experts with a background in athletics and coaching. Visit NILGameChangers.org, the ultimate destination for name, image, and likeness opportunities.